Another day, another Chevrolet. What do we got here? Some kind of Chevy with snow on it. Ah, oh, this stinks, folks. It stinks. Not the car. The fact that here we are at the end of April. And it's still freaking snowing. Let's see, this old Chevrolet, I think it's a Traverse, according to the floor mats, uh, is here for a lowly oil change. Wouldn't be a Chevrolet unless the money light was on, and that's on. And uh, wants us to check out his brakes. Let's clear our windshield. Oh, there we go. We're going to let this thing get hooked up. We're going to see what the engine light is on for. I imagine an EVAP code because he said he already uh, went to the zone got the gas cap replaced so I'm thinking so 2017 Chevrolet Traverse LT with the big three six let's just go in here and pop a code before we go for a rep I'm assuming gross evap leak and unless it has codes for cam timing how many miles are on this thing we have a button here to push fuel economy max 69 hours on the timer 244 gallons of fuel used, 40.9 average MPHs, and 83,000 miles. And let's see. Come on, Chevy. What you guys? PO 456, my guess. PO 496. What's the definition on that? That is a current code, history code. EVAP system. Can't read because my eyes still messed up. Flow during non-purge malfunction. Fancy. Okay. Now that we know what we're dealing with, I'm gonna get up some data. We're gonna take her for a little shake. And see what happens. Get my seat belt on so the dinger's not dinging. The old 496. So what are we thinking? I'm thinking having a white sensitive eye at this point with sunshine and white snow. Uh, it's not any fun. I should have some shades on. Let's see, I think there's a car coming. There goes one car. Let's sneak out here. And there's another car. Let's sneak out here. Any more, any more, any more? Nope. Let's ride. 496. So essentially, we have purge that is being seen during a non purge event. All right, so we would have to look at some service data uh, to see what what that entails. But what I'm imagining in my little mind is the ECM is monitoring uh, fuel tank pressure. That's going to be a key player in this whole little ordeal. And it sees vacuum being drawn on the tank when it's not commanding the purge valve on. So let's say it commands the purge at you know zero percent, has the vent open or closed in the back and all of a sudden we're seeing vacuum on the tank when it ain't supposed to be I assume that's how it can set this code so we could have a uh, stuck uh, purge valve which is you know wouldn't, wouldn't doubt it pretty common Chevrolet uh, we could have a canister closed valve that is restricted uh, evap canister vent or evap canister itself that is swamped and restricted Usually that would set a vent performance code. So I'm gonna assume their monitoring system works good. These these newer cars, uh, see this is what a couple years old. Um, usually their evap systems work pretty well at determining what's what, who's who's a problem. So right now I've got up on the scan tool uh, purge. We're running purge about 34 percent. Fuel tank pressure is about 1.9 volts. It is venting, so it puts us about negative two inches of water. Seems pretty normal. What we'll do is we'll go back and we will command the purge off and we'll make sure that it's functioning as it should. I'll show you that. So it's, uh, it's just about warmed up. It's about 210. We want to warm it up because we got to change oil on it. We'll head back. We'll look at some data. Hopefully it's still broke. If not, we'll fix it till it is broke. All right, so let's look at our information that we have at hand. So we're sitting here 
K-O-E-O. -E that means Keon Engine Off, in case you ever see that on anything. K-O-E-O, -E Keon Engine Off, K-O-E-R, Keon Engine Running. And we can see, we just want to grab our preliminary data. And technically, Keon Engine Off, our fuel tank pressure on a Chevrolet should be about 1.5 volts. And that's where we're at, because we're at atmospheric pressure. Back door's open, front door's closed. Purge solenoid is turned off, vent solenoid is open, it's allowing atmospheric air into the fuel tank, so it should be neutral. So we're at, you know, minus 0.2 inches of water, so like nothing. Technically, we should start it, and with the purge solenoid turned off, so it's not drawing any vacuum on the tank, our fuel tank pressure should stay at 1.5 and, you know, atmospheric pressure. So let's just start it up. Oink zoinks! What do we see? We went right up to 1.8 volts, minus two inches of water, and our purge is at 0%. How can that be? Let's shut it off. KOEO, and guess what? We're going right back to atmospheric pressure. So right here from the driver's seat, we already made the diagnosis. Let's start it back up. We're instantly drawing vacuum on the tank without being commanded on. And the good news is, our big fancy scan tool tells us what's wrong with it. Evap purge valve leak. That's its last malfunction it has stored in it. And that's our code, the P0496. And in this code, it's very specific. Uh, so for you use folks, those of you that don't know, what, we're, what we have is we just have a evap purge valve that is leaking. Now we should be able to go under the hood and prove that. Um, why they put a gas cap on it, I don't know. I don't care, we're here to fix it, so let's go out and prove what we see. So first thing first, we have to find the purge valve, which it has to pull intake manifold vacuum from somewhere. Take, uh, take this lid off here. Well, dropping a bunch of junk in the oil hole. You don't wanna get stuff in your oil hole. Hey, look at that, it's right there where we can see it. Now, mind you, sometimes when you touch these things, they miraculously heal themselves. So we're going to try to unplug the hose that goes back to the charcoal canister. This one here, this is what's going to pull our fuel vapors from the canister to burn them back through the engine. If you guys want, fantastic, probably some of the best on the World Wide Web EVAP videos, uh, Mike over at Wells, uh, Wells Electronics, which is NGK, which is... I can't remember the name of their channel. I will put a link. He does EVAP systems for GM, Chrysler, Ford, Euro cars, everything. Beautiful explanations. Uh, Mr. Becker over there, they're one of their technician. I don't know what his title is. Senior technician, internet advisor. <laughs> uh, pretty good fella. Anyhow, uh, you want to learn about the systems, go there. Way better explanation than I could ever do. I just get paid to fix cars. I don't get paid to explain how they work. <laughs> So we're going to unplug the hose. It's a double pincher. So pinch both the green tabs here if you get your digits in there. These little things. Unhook those and then most importantly we have to unhook the electrical connector. So we can make darn sure that there is no command being sent from the computer to turn this thing on. And typically when I did do this I would just stick my finger over it but that doesn't show you guys anything. So we're going to hook a vacuum gauge to it. The gauge of vacuum. Let's stick that right on its nipple. And then we'll start the car up. And here we go! Contact! What do we say? Holy smokes! We have full manifold vacuum, which we shouldn't. Sometimes you give them a little whack with a screwdriver. Let's do that. You get a whacking apparatus. Sometimes that'll fix them. Let me unhook my gauge here. Because we gotta be able to bleed the vacuum off. He's a sucker right now. No, nope, we ain't fixing this one with a screwdriver. It still has full manifold vacuum. So, uh, simple, easy peasy, uh, easy fix. It can only be a failed 
purge valve because we have it unplugged. So that eliminates the computer, that eliminates everything. Jablam! Got one from Napper. Not a sponsor. Now before you go in the comment box, yes, I am fully aware that you can get this car fixed for the low price of zero dollars. Uh, this item is warrantied from Chevrolet. They've recognized their mistake they've made with it. And uh, there is a campaign that you can go to your local GM dealer and get this fixed for free. However, this guy didn't want to deal with the shenanigans of the Chevrolet dealer, so he said, hey, how about you fix it there, pal? I guess that's a little easier than dealing with the frustration. Chevrolet had a lot of these in stock. They're about the same price as the aftermarket. But this way here we'll be able to offer them. It's two year, 24,000 parts and labor warranty from SMA. We're gonna unbolt it from the intake. We're gonna wiggle it out. Ah, baby is born. So there is your spacer set up on this thing. And you gotta make sure you can either transfer the old jiggly bits over or use uh, the new stuff. Probably what we'll do is we'll use the old stuff just to be on the safe side of things and make sure it all works. So let me peel these off here. I want to take no chances. Peel that off. Unenhanced. We'll go like this. Slip that in, flat side down. Reinstall the metal spacer. Reinstall this little guy. Get our bolt slipped in there, so that's all good. Uh, totally, totally just did that 100% backwards, live and on camera. Can't make this stuff up, folks. <laughs> this is why I don't work at Chevrolet. I'd never make the cut. Let's try this again. Let's just put it on the right way this time, there, fella. Yeah, I probably wouldn't last very long in the dealership. I couldn't hang with those guys. Nor do I have the certifications. So there's that. Now the one thing we will use out of the new packet is the O-ring. So we'll tear this thing open. We'll get out the O-ring. Slide that ramp on her nipple and now we'll grease that up a little. Put a little silicone lube on there. The old greasy nipple. Sounds like a good name for a car. Put the bolt back in it. Get a little wrench, whatever that is. Torque that to factory spec. Put our fresh air side of our PCB back in. Make sure that's slid on all the way. Click the hose. Click the clicker. Put all the junk back in the box. Oh gosh, make a lot of noise over there. And then, last but not least, we will install the lid. Prior to doing that though, we'll give her a little sheet juice. So it slips on a little easier for us. Remove our oil cap. Stick that where we will drop it. Line everything back up. Give her a couple, two, three clicks. Checks back on. Let's go look at some data. Fire hole. All right. Enhance. Enhance. We're going to some custom data here. Hopefully, we can get in here before the purge turns on. Uh, what do we want here? We want tank pressure. And we want. Uh, that purge command. Now we know our vent is open, so we don't really 
care about that. And here we are at 0, 0.0 inches and it's running and the purge is at zero. So that's good, that's what we would expect. Uh, like I say, that 1.5 volts, uh, what we can do is we will back out of here and we're gonna go do something special. So we're gonna go to a special test because we're special people. We'll go to EVAP, we will go to purge We'll just make sure that it turns on and off, providing the scan tool gives us the correct data that we want to look at, which oftentimes they don't, but hopefully in this case they do. We just want to be able to look at tank pressure. Now let's see here, fuel tank pressure, and then we have event command, and then purge command. So we're going to look at this. We are venting. Of course, we want line graphs. Okay, so now as we purge, bump up here 20%, 30% or so. Here under there clicking, we can see our fuel tank pressure sensor. Voltage is increasing, pressure in the tank is decreasing. We'll ramp her up here a little bit. Now it's not gonna build and hold pressure because we're venting, the back door is open. It's just drawing air through the tank. So theoretically, as we turn this off, we should go back to zero. Zero inches of mercury, or zero inches of water and 1.5 volts. So that tells us right now that our valve turns on. Jingle like that. You give it full sucky. And then it turns all the way back off. That's it. We're done. We know it works. We proved it. The dilemma now is we could have a gross leak, which we can pop out of here. We can prove that real quick. Make sure that we don't have a you know large leak in the system. Make sure the vent works. Make sure this thing's not going to come back and haunt us. So we're going to do a purge and seal. Oops. Abort. We're gonna go back in. We'll just look at tank pressure. So tank pressure, continue. We're gonna put these into line graphs. All right, we wanna start. We're gonna start pulling a little vacuum on it. Now right now the canister vent valve should have went closed. We're gonna see our, we're gonna get our voltage up around two and a half or so. Then we're gonna seal it off. Purge solenoid is now closed. Canister vent valve is closed. And at this point, we should maintain some vacuum in the tank. Now, naturally, it's gonna decay over time. Uh, if we had, you know, a missing gas cap or a gross leak, we would have watched it go back to atmospheric pressure very quickly. Uh, there is a given amount of time that it will go back to atmospheric pressure. You know, we got warm fuel in the tank. It's naturally expanding uh, and building pressure. But you can see here, we've got a pretty steady line. It's holding pressure pretty, pretty well. Uh, don't let the auto ranging graph here screw you up. Uh, look at your values. Uh, one thing I hate about this tool is that it auto ranges the min max values. Drives me absolutely nuts. And Bosch won't change it. And it ticks me off. Anyhow, uh, that's that. I'm satisfied. Mostly. But at least with this job we are. So hopefully you learned a little something here. Uh, but like I say, if you have this code, just take it to the dealer. They'll fix it for free, I think. I don't know if they whack you with some kind of you know, service charge you know, or something like that. And when I called Chevrolet, they weren't able to tell me if they would charge him anything or not. So hopefully they just do the whole thing for free. But you know, you never know. So now we just have to clear the codes and flush this toilet. So here's the deal. Oil's changed. Check engine light is fixed. The brakes are on. However, the folks in the brake video don't get to go on the test drive. You do. Because I didn't want to drive it until the purge solenoid showed up. Hey, it's that guy.
make sure our brakes are good and everything else. Let's drive around town. Looks like our snow melted. Doesn't stick around long this time of year. folks fixing the evap canister purge valve on your Chevrolet uh, 17 Traverse uh, big 36 pretty easy and just remember if you get an evap code don't put a gas cap on it uh, honestly I was telling Josh about this I think in in my entire career so let's say from 1999 till current 2020 however long that's been what I don't know too many years 21 years wow that's something to think about uh, the number of actual verified defective gas caps I've done I can count on one hand and I, I can probably I can almost recall every single vehicle and I'm like oh wow that's actually the gas cap so uh is not as um uh, well I want to say I can't think of the words uh it doesn't happen as often as what you think you know you go to the O'Reilly's the advance the you know the auto zone you know and they scan your car oh you got an evap code here by this gas cap uh, in my opinion, I would love to know the numbers of hundreds of thousands of senseless gas caps that have been sold in an effort to fix your check engine light. And along with that, oxygen sensors. So you get an engine light, don't change your oxygen sensor, don't change your spark plugs, and don't change your gas cap. Uh, because the odds of fixing it are pretty slim. Uh, anyhow, uh, that's it. I'm going to go inside. Got more junk out here to fix and got to keep on rolling. So why don't you guys roll on down there to that comment section. Leave your question, comment, criticism, concern down there. While you're down there, subscribe and ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.